Welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. This is not the Captain Kleeman channel, by the way. If you're a Captain Kleeman subscriber, this is the Kleeman channel. It's the spin-off of Captain Kleeman. And if you're not subscribed, you gotta do so down below. Today, we're gonna kinda show you the new to me Ford Ranger I picked up, and we got a couple little odds and ends we gotta do on it, and we'll explain why we got it. First thing, I gotta, I crammed her into the woods here. I'm not sure why. Well, we gotta get out of that situation for starters. It's got 250,000 frame miles, and then it's got a 3.0 that a local guy does this. He does it kind of commonly. It's got a 3.0 in it with a transmission to match that's got 88,000 miles on it. And it starts. How about that? Did I, my tire flat? Well, that's not great. I wonder if I can just grab you guys while we go by. No way this will fail. I feel like. I feel like I need to readjust. Okay, hold on. I'm just gonna set you down for the next shot, right? Right there. I've got a high idle issue, which I think is why it's having a hard time wanting to shift into gear. Two things I think I can check, vacuum lines. But the first thing, where is the, there it is. First thing I'm gonna check, I'm gonna ohm out the air control, idle air control valve, which is right here. Yeah, let me you wanna see closer. This is the idle air control valve. We're gonna pop this off. I've got the specs of what it should ohm out at. I'm gonna have to get a little screwdriver for me to do that. And then we'll see if this is good or bad. And if that's ohming good, then I'm gonna have to rig up a way to do a, a real fancy homemade smoke test and see if we got any vacuum leaks anywhere. Considering they dropped this engine in here, not literally, but figuratively, put this engine into place, uh, there's always the chance that a vacuum line got bumped or broke or something in that process. Ford says between seven and 13 ohms. That's a 10, probably a nine seven. Really high pizza score, adequate ohm reading. So we're ohming out at nine seven. So that should be good, that's a thin spec, which means we probably got a vacuum leak somewhere. Just kind of looking some things over. This doesn't look right back here. So it's a few days later, and I've got a new one of these. This is the PCV V, positive crankcase ventilation valve. Now. I'm not 100% sure this is what's causing our high idle. It doesn't exist on this engine, it's not here. Here's a plug that the junkyard would have put on the engine. Normally, whenever you have junkyard engines, if there's any hose or orifice or anything, they've got something plugged or capped. That plug is on there, which tells me that, um, well, it wasn't on there whenever they got it, so I'm guessing they never put it in. And when I pulled this one out, this one's, well, it rattles a little bit, but it's old, all the hosing is dry rot, cracked, and as is evident right here, just flat out non-existent. So I picked up another one. It was only like 50 bucks. Gotta see if I can get these clamps off here. I'm also realizing a huge problem. How am I gonna get that in there? Do I gotta take the intake off to get that in there? How am I gonna get that in there? See, I got this length of tube, and for the first time in a long time, it's too long to get in there. See that? See the problem? I think you gotta have the whole thing. I mean, probably it's designed that way, right? It's got some flex to it though. I mean, I bet if a fellow was careful, he could snap it right in half right before he gets it. And just slowly feed it around and try to keep it from kinking. Oh shoot. Oh, look at that. She fits. Great. Well, now that that's in there, I guess we're just gonna have to go Let's see if that made a difference. She was around 1600. Let's see what she does now. I'll leave you guys here in case there's an exciting geyser or something like that. That way you can see it, you know. Oh, it's a little lower than what it was. Well, let's see if she lets me go in and out of gear. Yeah, there we go. Okay, what about the drive? Neutral. Nope. Nope. Before I move on to anything else, I just, I disconnected the battery, the ground, and left it unhooked for a while. And then we're going to uh, fire this thing up and just let it run and see if maybe the computer just needs to relearn with the PCV valve 
fixed. Maybe it just needs to relearn itself. Oh gosh, right? Oh, go-kart. Oh, look at that. Sitting at a thousand. We'll let her idle a little bit. That's way better. We'll let it run just a little bit. Then we'll try her out. That sounds so much better already. Oh, like she likes it. Okay, now earlier when I put it in neutral, it'd shoot up to two grand. Now I put it in neutral, it doesn't go anywhere. Into drive. How about you now? <laughs> All right. Well, that's exciting. So it was just a bad PCV valve, and then I disconnected the battery. I had a tech buddy who said disconnect the battery after you change anything if it's got a computer, because the computer kind of needs to forget where it was set, and then reconnect it, fire it up, give it a chance to kind of relearn itself, and it should do the trick. And in fact, that is exactly what did the trick. So we're good to go on that. Let me give you the tour underneath. You know, a lot of, a lot of people are going to ask about the frame. Uh, that looks pretty good there. Some kind of fluid leaking on it from something, but looks good. Honestly, the frame's in pretty good shape. The truck itself came out of Tennessee, I believe. This is... I didn't... That's not my work. Okay, I need you to know that. That, uh... That's neat. I guess it does the job. We appear to have a weight reduction kit installed here. You can see the aftermath of that. So that's fine. I guess the... Bottom side of the tranny, that that looks real good. I think that's okay. You can keep the fluid to this side. That's what that does. Yeah. Yeah, so that's good. Everything's good there. Oh! See that? That was ground down to use as a ground, I believe. Which probably explains this situation. That's some high quality work. I feel like I need to do some more looking over on this thing. It'll be okay. It'll all work out fine. Your tailgate works. Huh? How fancy. Already got trash in the bed. She's ready to go there. Very nice. Even has the fancy cobalt. Yep. Just gotta give her a wiggle. Toolboxes. Huh? Oh. Great. A pencil. Oh, the latch is bent. It's got a real good touch-up paint job there. Good news is if I ever need anything smoothed down, I can just rub it on there and it ought to sand her down pretty good for me. Um, I'll put about 120 miles on it to give it a test out. So far, seems to do okay. Still one time, intermittently, decided to idle at 1500 while I was sitting in the drive through 15 to 1600 but other than that it's been sitting down around nine to a thousand which seems about right let me know if you work on ford rangers i got a buddy who's a, a tech that's what he does i'll probably bounce some things off of him we'll see how it does but after looking this thing over and driving it a little bit i'm pretty sure y'all are going to need to buckle up for the saga of the ford ranger because something tells me we're going to be under it over it on somewhere inside of it every compartment that there is this will keep the miles off that three quarter ton truck and it'll save me quite a bit in gas too. I did the test around 19 miles per gallon, which seems okay. That's pretty much double what the GMC got. It's not the best that's on the market right now, but you know what, for an old rig, a beater with a heater, I think she'll do the trick. In other words, it'll work. Hopefully, if it doesn't, you guys will find out. Thanks for watching, can't thank you enough. Truly mean that, I just, I can't thank you. Thanks so much, really glad you're here, sure am.